making sure social distancing is yep. okay. Six feet apart. Hi, everybody. Hi. Aaron Roth here, second swing master club fitter here with Mr. Tim Heron, four time winner on the PGA Tour, now on PGA Tour Champions. Decided to do a little fireside chat with him while we're in quarantine. No Wait, fire. No fire. It's too hot in here. Welcome to Minnesota. But uh, thank you for taking the time. Appreciate you uh, spending some time with me during this wonderful quarantine that we have here in Minnesota where no golf is being played. How have you been spending your time during this quarantine? Well, I've been trying to just kind of uh, getting out, walking the dog a little bit, and uh, just trying to stay as loose as I possibly can. But quarantine's been tough. I got, you know, three boys at home, my wife working out of the house. So uh, we're just making it happen, uh, just waiting for the band to release so we can get back to playing some golf. Absolutely. We're all looking forward to that. So tell me a little bit about the daily routine. For you right now? I mean, are you making breakfast for the kids? Are you helping them with their homework now when you normally be traveling and playing in tournaments? Well, they don't want me to help with their homework. <laughs> Trust me. They, they tell me how, how to do the homework. But, uh, simple, right? no, you know, we uh, we get together for our dinners and, you know, I'm usually cooking. My wife works probably till six, so I start dinner at five. We're usually on the table by about six, so. Uh, been doing that. I got the boat in the water. I got to get out of the lake once. Uh, the fish, but my buddy was saying I need a better depth finder, so I've been looking at the depth finder just to get him some structure in the lake. There you go. But uh, I feel like I'm I'm a little behind the eight ball here living in Minnesota because you can't fly to go anywhere to practice or anything. But uh, I know guys are down in the south in Arizona and Florida. There's their courses are open and still practicing. So uh, hopefully when we do open up, they'll give us a month and then we get out of uh, Minnesota or if the weather gets better and then go out and play some ball. Absolutely. So what is the schedule looking like for you uh, going forward? I know they just announced that the uh, Colonial is going to be the start for the regular PGA Tour. They did announce that. Yep. yep. Wow, well, you give the announcements quicker than I do. Hey. So uh, I'm sure they're, they're not allowing fans, but uh, right. I think it's going to be great for golf. We're one of the first sports to open up. I think uh, the sponsors are going to be happy just because of the exposure. It's the only thing live going on. Right. So if golf's one of the first to open up, that'd be uh, a cool thing. The nice part about golf, it's, on a, it's, in, it's not in a stadium, and you can have – social distancing and actually play. Um, most of the players probably don't like each other that much, so they <laughs> stay away from each other. But anyways, uh, you know, maybe just don't just tip your cap at the end of the round, you don't even have to shake hands, right. exchange cards. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that, uh, they can get this done. And, you know, the sponsors probably can't entertain their clients at these tournaments, but they're going to get big exposure. If it's the only sport on the planet right now. Absolutely. And uh, people want to watch watch things live. Well, yeah, I mean, if ESPN can have ESPN the Ocho going on and everybody's watching it, I think exactly. uh, I think the PGA Tour Champions has a, has a shot. Yeah, I don't know how many uh, finals I can watch the NBA finals, you know. We're going back Lakers and the Celtics and stuff like that. So Yeah, yeah, it's uh, replays are getting a little old. Yeah, they're getting a little separate. 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 separate stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, with this being your first year on PGA Tour Champions, how have they have they figured out a way to kind of restructure it with exemptions and, and whatnot going through the year? Um, I've we haven't talked much on the Champions Tour. What I've heard through the grapevine on the PGA Tour, I heard there's not going to be a tour school in 2021. Okay. I'm going to kind of keep it the same. Uh, What's very important for the PGA Tour is that they play the FedEx Cup and play it out. And then I think uh, guys that didn't get their card, they get a free year in 2021 to try to get the card. So it's it's going to be a little different. Um, I don't know what the champions are. There's only four cards at Tour School. I don't know if they're going to do that this year, like follow the same as the PGA Tour. But uh, what... I've heard is like July 1 for us. Okay. Um, it might be earlier than that. I, I noticed that the uh, senior US Open is canceled. Mm -hmm. 
And but I've heard where they've canceled the British Open, where they haven't canceled the senior British Open yet. So it's postponed right now. Postponed. Yeah. So hopefully maybe we can get the senior British. That would be fantastic. That'd now, be huge for me. Yes, yeah. it would. Now, do you feel as though if if they basically call this year a wash, you get the Charles Schwab Cup somewhat of an end, and you get a full year exemption for 2021, do you feel as though this is an, an advantage for you to kind of get back those, you know, like Tiger always talked about, reps? You know, you get some tournaments in, you're not worried about making enough money to keep your card full or through your exemption. Does this give you a better opportunity to kind of get back in the – and yeah. swing thing. I think the key this year for me was to kind of see the golf courses. And if I don't have a good tournament, kind of learn how to play the golf courses for next year. Um, well, my career money is, I think I'm going to get three, three to four years um, full time out on the Champions Tour. I don't know about the majors, but uh, I think I get two years in the majors. Um, so it was to see the golf courses. So they right. uh, they canceled the one in Bloxy. They say that was the best golf course we play all year, oh. like hard or whatever. So I didn't get to see that golf course. But the advantage that the Champions Tour has is that we play 26 events throughout the year. Mm -hmm. We spread them out. We uh, last Charles Schwab, I think, might be the first week in November or last week in October. So out of those 26 events, they're you know out of 50 weeks, they're spread out. So a lot of the sponsors have postponed and moved to the fall. So we do have some weeks where, you know, it used to be two weeks on, a week off, things like that. We're gonna have more tournaments in a row, which might actually be an advantage for me because some some guys are gonna, they're so used to playing only a few weeks in a row. But, uh, you know, I'm. I've been used to on the PGA Tour uh, playing a whole month in a row. So. Right. Now, with the limited schedule that you have been playing, you haven't missed a cut yet. So there's that, right? Yeah, I got that going for me. You got that going for you. Yeah. Right. So, but out of your whole experience on the PGA Tour champions, what's the biggest difference between the regular tour and the champions? Good, well, bad, or indifferent. I know. What I've, what I've seen is, you know, you hear the guys are still really good, and they are. Um, the advantage on the Champions Tour is there's not as much rough. But what I've realized is there's not as much rough for everyone else. Right. So is that an advantage for me or not? It, you know, one way or the other, it's easy just to see that everyone gets to take the advantage. Of course, they're a little shorter. They're probably not quite as in as good a shape, but the greens are a touch slower than some on the PGA Tour. Um, so, you know, I've only played three out of the first four events. So, you know, I'm still learning uh, the golf courses and trying to figure out what the advantages are. What I, all I know is uh, you got to kind of hang in there. Newport, I finished 18th, and I had a chance probably to finish top 10. And my chance was actually on the back nine. You know, I had a couple three putts, and if I don't three putt those holes, I'm you know top ten. I missed a couple short putts too, but birdie putts. So I had a chance. Um, a lot of guys say you just need that one nine holes where you shoot pretty low, six, yeah, five six under, and then you're out for races. Well, at the end of the day, that's kind of how PGA it's PGA Tour LPGA Champions putter. Yeah, oh, yeah. So putting, is, putting, yeah. putting is the biggest biggest thing and getting used to those greens. Yeah. You're and you played how many years on the PGA tour? Uh sixteen full years. Yeah. Sixteen full years playing the same golf courses over and over. So yeah. when you talk about getting getting to see the new courses and getting used to how to play them and whatnot, will definitely be an advantage for insect. Yeah, I mean yeah, and it's also a way of not putting too much pressure. On yourself to perform quickly and right out of the gates, and you know, I'll have a better chance once I know these golf courses because you know, Bernard's been playing them now for 12 years, so yeah, so, yeah. he no, knows yeah. a lot of these golf courses, absolutely, and how to play them. So, your first tournament was down in Naples, 
Naples, you were there. I was there. I was there along with a bunch of other knuckleheads and yeah. family and friends and whatnot. And my sponsor. And your sponsor. sponsor. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. So was that, did that make it more fun, more nerve wracking, put more pressure on you? Or it didn't matter. You're playing golf. You've been doing this as a professional for so many years. You could have had a thousand of your family and friends there or zero. It wouldn't have changed anything. Um, no, it's probably a little more nerve wracking. We made, I made sure that I went out to, uh, to dinner with my family and friends. Um, make sure everyone had their tickets and stuff. It, 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 you know, they didn't really have a will call. Um, and so it was a little more nerve wracking because it was my first, and this is, you know, I built it up in my mind so much how much I wanted to get on the champions tour. Right. right away. So this is it, this is it, this is it. And yep. uh, um, I probably wasn't 100% prepared. I wasn't feeling like I was hitting it that good going in there. But I know just from playing in that, you know, I got to get the, the putter going and that I'll have some opportunities and just make sure I stay patient. What's nice is, um, what would have been nice is that maybe if the friends and family would have spread it out through the year, because it's always fun to hang out with someone. Right. And then you can spend more quality time if everyone's right. there. It's hard to get around and see everyone. Yeah, but this was like the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was the Super Bowl. You've, been, yeah, you've been building this up, yeah, know. you know, knowing you for quite a few years now. And every year it's one step closer to 50. One, yeah, yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. wait to turn 50. I can't wait to turn 50. You're the, old, you're the only man I know. And the ball just wouldn't go in the hole that week. So. It, it happened. Yeah. It happened. Um, out of all the guys that you've not necessarily reconnected with, but who are you like most excited to see week in and week out on, on PGA Tour Champions? Well, it's always fun to see John, John Daly. Um, yep. uh, the next week I went to Tucson and I split a condo with Tommy Tolls, who I used to hang out quite a bit. So yep. it's been fun to rehash, and I've been playing a lot of practice rounds with the Scott Design. So he was giving me the ropes and whatever. He goes, he goes, I mean, I, he goes, I know you're a rookie, but you sure ask a lot of questions. You've been doing this for over 20 years. Right? Why are you asking so many questions? Yeah. He goes, it's not that much different. The rough's down and the course is shorter. Are, of course, they're shorter and things are a little easier. Oh, okay. I won't ask the questions. So how's the family? How's the dog? And how's yeah, the blind right. horse? He used to have a blind horse, but I think he passed away. <laughs> so best threesome that you could have out on the Champions Tour, yourself, two other players that would, that you would think you would play the best golf with? Wow, that's a good question. The best golf with. Um, not the most fun, but like, no, it would be motivating, whether or not you just can't stand losing to the person, or. I mean, I would say Bernard Langer, but he might be a little too slow, where they'd eventually like, probably put us on the clock or something <laughs> like that. But uh, yeah, he'd be definitely motivating. Um, I played with Tom Lehman uh, my first week yeah. out. Um, probably uh, what's motivating is to kind of see the long guys, see how much longer maybe they are than I am or whatever, or if I can hold a candle to them, you know, a little bit or, or stay up with them. Well, so, now you got to worry about that at home. Yeah, exactly. With your kids yeah, I know. getting older and stronger and faster and that's just not I've, fair. I've always said, like, you know, they go, do you like playing with Tiger Woods? I go, yeah, because usually you're in one of the last two groups that you're playing with Tiger Woods. Yeah, so, so, we're playing well. so that would be like Bernard Langer or Scott McCarron or something like that. Because they're usually, they've been in the mix the last few years. All right, you just but mentioned. Kevin Sutherland probably would be uh, a great guy to just play with because he's been, he's consistently plays good, uh, fast player, quiet. Um, all good qualities. Yeah. Fast yeah. player doesn't yeah. ask a lot of questions. No, exactly. Ask a lot of questions. <laughs> I'll ask him all the questions. Well, perfect. Now you just brought up two names. What did you do with your noodle? Oh, sure. Okay. Okay, we're still good. Still good. Um, Longer and Karen. Oh boy, come on. Up. Anchor no anchor. Um, I'd have to probably say, you know, um, sometimes they anchor and sometimes they don't. But it's all in, in the rules, I guess. What's funny is I go, you know, I was gonna maybe take a cart to see what it's like in Newport. I told Scott McCarran that and he goes, I don't know. 
if I do that? And they go, what do you mean? He goes, well, it just doesn't work yet. And I go, well, I had to bite my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. What okay. doesn't look good? Yeah, oh, Scott, thanks. Yeah, okay. Appreciate the advice. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can take a cart. We can take a cart most of them. Like Tucson, we couldn't take a cart. Okay. It was all walking. But the guys that can't, I mean, um, John Daly could because they have medical. Yep. And same with Scott Blank with his diabetes. So they can take a cart, but you have to walk. Um, but most of them you can take a cart. So I played Newport. I walked my first two rounds and the first nine. And then I was like four under and, you know, like 25th. I go, oh, I got to see what it feels like, how different it is. Right. It was good because I think it got my caddy walking faster. So it worked out. <laughs> it really worked out. You just trying to keep up. I go, dude, you can't keep up with me in the cart. You don't even need a caddy. Yeah, exactly. No, he has, he has to actually carry the bag. So it's kind oh, of a weird feeling. That is new. Because I'm by myself in the cart. So, and then I wait for him and then, you know, I check out the articles and stuff like that. I didn't carry a book caddy. Do so. you normally carry? I do not usually carry a book Really? But sometimes I do. Have you done that your entire career? Yeah, my uh, my first two caddies were so good with numbers that I who who I those messed caddies? up. It was uh, Gordon Hunley, who his name's Harpo. They Harpo. Name well, they got Hunley. they all have nicknames. And then Scotty Steele was just Scotty or Scooter. Scooter. And he caddied for Larry Pies when he won the Masters. And I think he's pretty good. And he was a he was a good uh, great caddy, but very good with numbers. We were together, I think, about twelve years. I think I caught him twice in those 12 years. Wow. With uh, this number or something. Now, you caddied for somebody in a pretty big tournament, right? Oh, yeah, my sister. Yeah, won, she won the mid amateur. That's, uh, so that's, that pretty, was, that's pretty yeah, big deal. I retired to bib. I haven't caddied ever since. Actually, I caddied for my son. I had to drive him an hour and a half away for the Minnesota State Amateur. And uh, he bogeyed like the first. Did he blame you? Two of two out of three holes. No. And I, I've always been like, nah, I'm not going to caddy for you. It's good for you to learn or whatever. Yeah. But I was up there. I drove an hour and a half. It's another hour and a half home. I go, you know what? I might as well get on the bag. So I just walked up after three holes and uh, got on the bag, and he made it. Um, he won the playoff. So nice. He made the hey, effort, so. All you do is win. Win, win, win. It's key. So you were, I don't understand this, and, and you know, a bunch of crazy people out there that voted on this, it's, you know, the PGA Tour player, but you were voted the funniest yeah, I don't guy know. on tour. Is that funny looking? Funny? I, uh, how do they mean that? I don't know. What's oh, that supposed to be? I have no idea, but I want to know who's the funniest cat out there. Well, who's the most not annoying funny cat? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> They're all a little. Uh, there's some. There's some funny caddies. That's a that's a good question. Uh, I haven't really even thought about it. I think uh, Lance Tenbrook's pretty funny. He's got a what's his pretty, name? Uh, Last call, Lance. Mm-hmm. He's got a pretty funny uh, demeanor about him. Yeah, kind of conservative. Uh, well, I don't know about real conservative, but he's he's a beauty. Um, there's just a lot of beauties. Oh, absolutely. We yeah, he, I had a, I, a guy, I looked like a, a little dwarf compared to this guy. He's about 6'6", six, six, just a huge <laughs> man, and he came for me, uh, and uh, they called him Big E. Big E. Yeah. Great guy. So we were down in the tournament, like, like we mentioned before, and we happened to run into uh, John Daly's daddy. Oh, at, Peter Van Rooy, uh, he's pretty funny too. Hotel. He's a hot guy. Oh, yeah, I can I can tell that he uh, he and Daly could get along. Oh yeah, and also fight like oh yeah, like they were married. Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah, I'm sure they're about that. Oh, absolutely. Peter Van Rooy, he was a hell of a golfer from South South uh, South Africa, and he's Ernie Els' age, and they were both like really good juniors, and they thought Peter was going to be just as good, but. He became a caddy. Um, you know, he played a lot of. You know what? I don't know if he. I think he turned pro, but he is a hell of a junior anchor, worldwide junior anchor. Nice. Now, 
everybody knows about your PGA Tour stats. They can all look it up and whatnot. What's one thing uh, that you're most proud of from your amateur playing days? Well, probably most proud of probably chipping and putting and kind of getting out of jail. I drive it way better than I did. I used to be long and crooked. Now yeah. I'm kind of short and straight. Well, but uh, yeah, I used to, I think just being creative out of the woods and, and trying to understand angles and, and setting up for the next shot. So if you're in the woods or you have a trouble shot, it's very important that you set yourself up and give yourself a chance to make a par. You know, you right. always want to be putting for birdie or par. Yeah, take the big and number out of play. Take the big number out of play. So it's all about setup. Um, when you hit in the trees, sometimes you're not looking at birdie. You're looking at how am I going to get this done? How am I going to get this up out of par? I mean, for me as a kid, what helped me with that, just besides being very crooked off the tee, so I got a lot of practice on the court, but we used to do range Olympics on the driving range where – you know, you and a buddy, it's like horse, but with golf shots, trying to figure out how do I make this ball curve 60 yards one way and then the next swing going 60 yards the other way. Did you ever do any of that sort of thing? Or, to, or like one club, nine hole? You know, yeah, I mean, I buddies? used to do it actually with Tiger. We were in the back of the range at uh, TPC one time, and it was probably early 2000s, and we were trying to hit lob shots up through this crookedness tree, like way up there. And we just move up to see, see if we can do it, and we move up closer to the tree. There was no gambling. Up, and then Tiger just came over the first one, right up through there. Of course and, he did. And then we got him to hit like different shots and stuff, big hooks and slices and stuff. What he can do with a golf club is amazing. He's, is he still the best ball striker on the planet? Yeah, iron. Iron, yeah. for sure, driver, yeah. that's another bet. He's another. got, uh, yeah, he's, He's awesome. When he's on, man, he's the best in the world. He's got a lot of self-confidence on him. What he does and when he's – he knows how to win. That right. doesn't – he loves being in that position. He doesn't back off in that position. Some people are afraid of the moment, yeah, right? exactly. I mean, you won four times. times. What, was, what was the biggest hurdle for you to get that first victory? Well, my biggest, my biggest deal was to stay in the moment. Like, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Um, it's easy to do. So I was I was never really trying to win until the very end. Just kind of try to stay in the moment. Like what we were talking about, try to make the least amount of shots in one hole mm -hmm. and not think about the big number, you know? Right. Or not make the big number. What was the – what was the biggest or toughest learning curve for you out on the PGA Tour? Like, what was the hardest thing to, to figure out or get used well, to? Well, I think I kind of made a – I kind of made a um, – I tried to get straighter. Where Phil Mickelson, I remember him going to Butch Harmon. Butch goes, we got to shorten your swing, make you get straighter. He goes, no, I don't ever want to lose my distance. Right. It's about distance. I think I got caught in to where they lengthened all the golf courses, and I got straighter, didn't hit it quite as far. Right. Um, so I think that's probably where uh, I got confused the most on the tour. I probably should have just kept trying to bomb, bomb it. Yeah. Um, if you could build like the perfect golfer, so you talk Tiger Woods, Iron Game. Okay, who would you want to drive the ball for you? Dustin Johnson. Fairway Woods. Um, Got him, Stenson. Yeah, Stenson, Fairway Woods. Yeah, that's okay. we don't care about hybrids. Um, we don't. No, well, yeah, we actually do. We we've, we've been trying to figure that that one out. Who would be long iron hybrid type? He's one of the best long iron players. Maybe a VJ Singh, or I mean, that was back in the day, right? People probably want to know now. I'd have to say Rory McIlroy. That's a good. That's a very good answer. How about wedges? Uh wedges. Zach Johnson and putter. I'd still go with Steve Stricker. Stricker. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. I like the way Steve Stricker plays. Yeah, he's pretty good. Now, how many putters? Now that we're on putters, how many putters do you think you own? I don't know. You probably counted them. <laughs> Well, uh, would you say it's over 200? 
Probably. Yeah, probably just north of 200. If you had to pick one putter out of those and that was the last putter you could use, what would it be and why? And you can't well, say any of your gold putters. No, I won't. But I would probably... Um, I have like a copper... I wonder if I bent the shaft, but I, I have a copper thing that I wanted to most of my tournaments with. And now you're going to say, is why don't you just go back to that one? Well, but I think I would <laughs> just because I cut it the best with it. Why wouldn't you? But those putters are a little lighter, and I don't know why we progressed into the heavier putters. Well, now you're playing on slower greens. Slower greens, so yeah. Or faster greens. Oh, slower greens, you want uh, lighter putters. Mm. But they're not slow. No, I, I, I know that. Yeah. Slower, yeah. It's still running 13. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. some of them, yeah. Now, how different is the mentality going into a three-day tournament compared to four days? Yeah, it's more. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a faster. Uh, you know, it's not a marathon; it's a sprint. Right. But uh, on the other hand, you still have to be somewhat patient. You can't let it fire. You can't get a feel on you know what you're doing, what what's working well for you, and, and things like that. But uh, you have more opportunities. So if it doesn't happen, you can hopefully get on fire. Right. Right. So it's a different mentality. So, in reference to like all the years that you played, I've I've always been kind of curious if there's one shot that you hit that kind of was like that ignition. It just it it got you going. It got you you know your first PGA Tour win or amateur win or well like, like most influential shot you have hit. Well, I I was talking to. I was playing with um, Ted Purdy in Houston, and I played the 36 holes. We're gonna probably we're both gonna miss the cut, but I had a really good back nine going into the next week was Colonial. He goes, "Man, you figured something out." I go, "Yeah, I think I did." And he goes, "Man, you played really good on that back nine. Yeah. Uh, no, I think then we went to Dallas, and then from Dallas, I, I won Colonial. So I think I started figuring. Things up. Anything. It's kind of funny because he brought it up, or I wouldn't even. You really didn't even think it. about it. Yeah. Uh, I've only had this happen a couple times in my life where it's like you get done with the round and you're like, wait a minute, what did I just shoot? How did that happen? Yeah, that kind of kind of just get in the zone. Would that be the case for you in the four wins, or was it, you know, just? Yeah, no, that happens too. Yeah, I make sure my caddy goes into the like, into the scoring trail <laughs> because you can't even get in the zone. You're really focused on, in the moment, what you're doing. You know, if the holes are screwed up, whatever. I think Tiger gets in that zone, but I think he's pretty good on knowing what's going around, around him, too. Right. So, so did you look at leaderboards as you were playing? Oh, yeah, I looked at leaderboards. and But there's nothing you can do about it. You can only just go out and play. Right. I, I – you know, you hear some players, I never look at leaderboards, never. I I don't understand that mentality because you golf is a game of shoot the lowest score you win. You kind of got to know what you have to do to That's get true. there. That's true, but is that really going to help you? I guess if you're in a certain situation where you got to go for it on a par five or layup. You got a four shot lead. Right. And, you know, it's over water, you might want to lay up. Seven iron, seven iron, seven iron, something like that. And some people could have yeah. won a few big tournaments doing that. Yeah. But um, favorite club in the bag? Um, probably the driver. Driver. Yeah. Nice. What driver is it? It's the uh, Payne 400. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ha haven't found 410 yet. That uh, that that works. Working on it. I'm working, working on it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the shaft. So. Okay. Well, we'll yeah. look into that. And then Ping's coming out with some new drivers. And, you know, they've shut it down, so it might be a little later now. But I'm um, excited about the new three way too. Oh, okay. yeah, maybe. Hmm, maybe. Well, everybody's coming out with new stuff. Yeah, everyone's. We're not, we're not breaking any news here. Yeah. But um, if you could play one golf course, and that's it, for the rest of your life, what would it be? And why? Uh, probably Wyzetta, because I grew up on it. 
Yeah. Um, that's kind of like home. That's where the golf started. You might as well end it there. And I, and I know better than to gamble with you on that golf course because, you know, you talk about getting a no so, golf course is yeah. you play blindfold and still, still shoot 64. Yeah. Just, it's probably one of the most comfortable places I feel in the world. And that's what we need to find right now in this coronavirus thing. Where do you feel comfortable? Absolutely. As yeah. long as we're six feet apart. And we're, yeah. Yeah. Stay away. Well, Tim, thank you very much for spending well, some quality time. Thank you, Aaron. Can uh, I ask you some questions now? Absolutely. Have at it. Let's go. So why did you decide to uh, put the beard back down? Does Lori like it better? She hates it. She hates she it. She is severe? Hates it. Can't it's like clean and cut for like one week. Well, yeah, and then the virus hit and my trimmer oh, broke and oh, I don't like going to the, I don't like going to the store. I hear you. I feel less safe at the store than I would on a golf course. But that's for another topic. And how's second swing? Second swing, we are weathering the storm. We are focusing on online sales and support, um, staying real busy. Um, and uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll, we'll get the proverbial uh, band back together to get the stores opened up. And, like Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Russ, I Ivan, mean, we need more of these hats. Yeah, please. those are cool. Thank you. Um, no, it's a great company, and I, I see it uh, getting back out of speed. And, you know, absolutely. Hopefully, all things, so. hopefully, right, well, hopefully soon. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You're the best. All right.